In part one of our Predicting Wildfire Smoke series, I covered a bunch of the common applications that are basically consumer oriented that a majority of people would use when they start noticing that their air is filled with smoke. In part two, we're going to turn to one of my go-to apps that uh, kind of consolidates everything we talked about in episode one into one place and that app is called Null School. Before I change the view because we are going to be focusing on fire smoke in this episode but I just happened to notice because of the date that we're recording this today and right now you can see over here Hurricane Calvin that is heading off over to Hawaii here and um, just out of interest if you did want to investigate Calvin a little more or any other hurricane that's out in the ocean you can see here how you can zoom in on it and here's Hawaii over here here's the coast of uh, Mexico over here I believe yeah and um, what might be interesting is if we look at uh, the wind speeds where our dot is located and you can reposition it and we've got wind speeds of uh, 58 kilometers an hour right there and 84 kilometers there 106 right there and so on so if you go to the eye you can see that there's nothing going on in the eye at three kilometers and then if you wanted to um, check how friends and family are doing over in Hawaii you can choose some locations there and see that uh, you're getting 30 kilometer an hour winds off the uh, southeast coast of Hawaii and then you can move around to other areas and see what is going on there I just threw that in because I found it rather of interest and it is off topic my apologies for that so now we'll get back on track here so now that I've digressed I would like to get back on track uh, with respect to fire smoke so I suppose one of the easiest ways to do it if you are in the location already where you want to see how that the fire smoke is affecting you bring up the control panel here by clicking as I just did and then under control click on current position and um, that will take me to where I am right now that makes it quick and dirty and simple to find your location and one of the first things that I want to do is just see where the fires are at that might be affecting my location and there's a couple of different ways to do it one of the my favorite is actually to go over to uh, the chem scale and pick on carbon monoxide because that gives you um, a good idea about where all the fires are that might be affecting your location and we can see here that it appears to be these fires in central British Columbia that are affecting our location in southwestern Alberta so that is my favorite way there are however other ways of uh, seeing how many of those fires there are and that involves going over to bio and um, clicking the fires annotation and you can see it actually kept my previous selection of the carbon monoxide and now we can see where all those fires are in that general area and of course it's showing some of the smaller fires as well that aren't generating the carbon monoxide however I am primarily interested in the large ones that are most responsible in all likelihood for bringing the smoke into my area. 
Before we leave this view, uh, I would like to direct your attention over here to the control panel and the very top row where it says data. And that is always a good way to reference what you're looking at in case you were wondering what you've actually got and where you are. So here, for example, we've got uh, the wind at surface level plus the carbon monoxide at surface level and the concentration of it and fire detections. So those are what we're looking at now. And then I want to change this over to particulates. And now we can see that I still have my fires uh, as shown by these dots here. And we'll just leave those in there. And we can see how now the particulates at the PM 2.5 measurement are affecting my area and I've picked PM 2.5 because that would be the most common uh, that we want to look at for fire smoke. As we're looking at particulates I suppose the next common question would be what's the difference between these overlay selections that we can choose here and I think what we can do is briefly run through what those are this one is with respect to dust. Now all these um, measurements are taken at a light level of 550 nanometers and so th the dust won't be very relevant for us unless we were sitting off the coast of Africa then we were wondering where all the dust was coming from on our boat. Now uh, PM1 <coughs> this shows the mass of atmospheric particles that have a diameter of less than one micron and you can see from the fire smoke here that that would be relevant and then as we increase the size of the particles we can see the intensity gets a little bit uh, more intense here so now what we're looking at is uh, atmospheric particles with a diameter of less than 2.5 microns and then naturally of course uh, we go up to the larger particles where we have a uh, mass of atmospheric particles with a diameter of less than 10 microns. And um, we get on to the OMAT, which I actually don't know anything about. But if I hover over it, we can see here that it gives us uh, a description, not only as a pop-up box when we're over it, but down in the lower right-hand corner as well. And again, that seems to indicate that it's organic matter with an aerosol optical thickness of 550. Now we come to a, a trickier one which is sulfates. So you may have noticed that when we were on the chem line we had these overlays which included sulfur dioxide. And then when we go back to particulates you get sulfates and that may cause some confusion because sulfur dioxide, SO2, it's a gas and SO4, what it does is it's a molecule becomes a particle and the particle size is 2.5 and that's why the PM 2.5 and the SO4 optical thickness are here. It's an anion and it's composed of, as I said, one sulfur atom and four oxygen atoms. And because it's an ion, it carries an electric charge. So it typically therefore exists in the form of a solid particle. And those particles are referred to as sulfate particles. Whereas SO2 that we saw over here under chem, that is sulfur dioxide and it's a gas that's composed of one sulfur atom and two oxygen atoms. So it exists as a gas at standard atmospheric conditions and it can be emitted into the atmosphere from various sources which include volcanic eruptions, industrial processes and of course in the case of what we're interested in here, wildfires. So now I know that at my location by 
simply looking out the window and this is what I can see. You can just make out uh, the ridge of Mount Rundle in the distance here and normally that is completely clear when I look from my yard. However, now you can see that I almost cannot see the mountain at all. So naturally I'm going to be interested in knowing when things are going to get better. Better than what I'm seeing over here is 77 UG per M3. Now what that metric means is it's the concentration of an air pollutant. It's given in micrograms and that's one millionth of a gram per cubic meter of air. And there we go. So 77 is considered to be um, a fairly high level of pollutant and um, for people at risk or whatnot they should not be going outdoors. So naturally you want to know when are things going to get better and that's the nice thing about Null School is it will forecast for you as well as look at the history of events by going backwards and forwards and so what you do here is under the control they move eight hours into the future and the single chevron moves one hour and so let's do it quick and dirty let's see what's going to be happening in my location again which is the green circle here and it's at 77 let's move it up eight hours and see what's happening well things are going to improve in eight hours from now by the looks of things. My pollutants are going to drop down to 24 uh, micrograms and that's in eight hours from my present time and then let's go another eight hours and now we're up to um, the 16th which is tomorrow at 4 a.m. and it's looking like it's going to be nice and clear. Then let's go to when we might be waking up at let's say 7 a.m. on a Sunday and if this model is accurate we are going to be in the clear which is going to be good news and this mountain will then be visible. So how is Null School's prediction accuracy, you may wonder? Well, in the afternoon that it took me to make up this video and then render and process it, it is now uh, almost 4 o'clock our local time. And have a look at this picture, which is the same as the picture I took a few hours ago. And have a look at what Null School is predicting they basically predicted that the smoke would lessen and it would go down to 38 UG per square meter from 77 and by the looks of this picture it, that would indeed appear to be the case. So my first impressions with Null School's accuracy seem to be a lot better than some of the competing products such as firesmoke.ca and I'm looking forward to perhaps tomorrow having it look like this and we will have clear skies again and Mount Rundle will look like it did when Amar took this picture of it.